Okay, well, welcome everyone again. Um, our speaker, this second speaker for this morning, is John Soika, who's a longtime member of Novak and uh, semi professional. He gets involved in, in using his optics in his work during the day. Um, he's not a retiree yet, he's still working yeah. hard, keeping us safe. Um, he's going to talk about his work in making astrophotography simple by combining it with smartphones and your existing telescope. Uh, so please welcome John Soika. Thank you, Alan. So just to start, this picture was not taken with a cell phone. It was taken with an S-Big uh, camera. All right, but I, I do got something to go on that. All right, so we can go through this. You know what's funny is, uh, I'm not going to read this to you, but uh, who here is from the uh, Smithsonian's? You've got the doctor here and a couple of people. So uh, myself, B B Bob Traub, and one other person helped uh, with, with doing some imaging in the Smithsonian for your uh, sidewalk astronomy, I believe it was. And we had went out there because they wanted to image from downtown D.C., but it was surrounded by lights, by street lamps. I'm like, this, I don't know how this is going to work. But we did some computations, and we figured with a certain type of camera and with the type of uh, deep s uh, sky, the uh, aluminum deep sky filter, that we'd be, it'd be able to block all the white light, but not the good stuff from the stars. And in theory, it was supposed to work, okay? But I spoke like it was going to work. And it ended up, we, so, so we, we uh, set it up, we, we uh, pointed it onto this nebula. In fact, it was the ring nebula. And slowly enough, the, the pictures started coming in. I was like, that's great, because I was, I was hoping it would. So that's actually in my bio as one of the successful things that I've been involved in. But thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So I, I always like to start with the slides. It's what my friends think I do, what my mom thinks I do, what society thinks I do, and what I actually do, <laughs> okay? And people, people who get to know me know that I, I, I like to be boastful, and just to prove this time that it's, I'm not, go to the next slide. This is, uh, my friend Brian is actually here this week, but that's actually ice and icicles hang, hanging off my scope. This was the result to get that first shot of the Rosette Nebula. It's up in the winter time, February, or between January and February, and uh, it gets down to 17 degrees. And so uh, I had to, to use my s big because it's just a workhorse and it survives uh, cold temperatures. So there you go. So uh, I'm just, this is going to start off very simple and then get more complex. So after looking at the first few slides, don't say this is too basic for me. I just want to get some key points across. The first one is, you know, what is a photograph? So especially with a digital camera. So it's, it's an image created by lighter photons falling onto a light sensitive surface usually photography film or electronic medium such as a CCD or a CMOS chip. So the, the, the key thing here, I want you to remember, CCD, CMOS chip are called the sensors. When, so when people speak about their, their data collection, they'll, they'll talk about their sensor, but they're really talking about the chip. So what chip are we talking? Well, actually, that's the next slide. The two things we care about for DSLR astrophotography, excuse me, for smartphone astrophotography, is the shutter speed or, or the exposure time and the ISO setting. If you have those two functions, then you can actually image with your smartphone. Now, a lot of smartphones don't have extended sh shutter speeds. You can do one or two seconds, but maybe not 10 seconds or 30 seconds. But I found some apps out there that you can download for your smartphone that allow to turn it into a DSLR with DSLR type functions where you can image between 10 to 30 seconds, which is great for nebula and for deep space objects. And if you don't think it's possible, I'll show you that it actually was and very simple with, with some rubber bands. So let's go to the next thing. So this was just the basic cameras. This is an old slide, but you know, these are all the things that you can uh, use provided you have adjustable ISO and shutter speed. And you could do that with, with, with the smartphone now. Let's get through this. This is not really important, just a little bit. Uh, there's types of projections. There's prime focus where you mate the camera with no lens to the telescope, and the telescope actually becomes your lens. Most astrophotographers like to do that. Uh, it gets rid of aberrations. Uh, there's more control. Plus, if you, stack, if you begin to stack off more things, your, your, your uh, tubes begin to hang and almost warp, and it's just, just not worth it. But it is important to note that because we are attaching an iPhone to an eyepiece, it is a focal projection. 
So I was talking about sensors. You know, if you look in back of your camera, some of them don't have the mirrors anymore, like the uh, Sony cameras, you can just see the chip. But the goal is to get an image onto the chip, and believe it or not, behind this piece of glass is a teeny tiny chip. So why, why do we care about that? Let's continue on. The goal, so this is what I want the group to remember. The goal of what we're doing here is to get a focused image onto that chip. So, for example, with the uh, DSLR, you get it, and then it, you can see the, the image right there on, onto the chip. And the same thing here, you just want to focus something onto the, um, onto the uh, uh, camera sensor. And so it should look like this. It, it, there, you know, if, if, if you could see it, it should lo look like this on the chip. And the benefit of a smartphone is that while you're looking at it, you can see it right on the screen in uh, video mode. So you just focus. Um, what's next here? So I don't know if people want to take a picture of this slide or maybe take a copy of it later, but these are phones uh, or applications that are known to work with the cameras. So uh, the Samsung stock camera in professional mode, you, you can look online on how to turn on the professional mode. Got open camera, wi which I've used, camera 360. A popular one is camera FV5. I used it, it was okay, uh, but I preferred the open camera for taking video but my imaging was done in uh, this, the Sony stock camera professional mode, which gives you up to uh, 10 seconds of recording time. Um, let's just get to the iPhone VSCO, camera, two, camera Plus 2, and Pro Camera. Now, if you take a look, I, I don't have an iPhone camera, but I'm banding somebody does, but the iPhone camera is in the corner. So that's actually not going to work well when you're trying to mount the uh, camera to the eyepiece. So you've got to use a one and a uh, quarter inch eyepiece for iPhones, you're gonna find that out. So, uh, because you just, it's, it won't connect to the two inch part, because you, you need to sense, center the image onto the eyepiece, and you can't do that with the iPhone on, on a two inch. Um, probably worth mentioning is Samsung's API for the camera limits you to 10 seconds. Okay, but if you were to purchase a camera where you have something called root access, you could change that to 30 seconds or 45 seconds. You're, you're in control. But the average phone you buy in a Verizon store is 10 seconds. I, I do know that LG phones will let you go to about 30 seconds. Did the, uh, there it goes. And then the, uh, the iPhones, you've got, a, uh, you, you, you can go up to 30 seconds as well. Um, are there any questions so far? Now I'm just going to talk about it. Just gonna You'll start to realize it because as soon as you start to use the rubber band, in short, you're, you're just rigging it, and you'll be able to, to once the rubber bands are on it, you'll, you'll be able to move it, all right? Because there's enough tension to hold it, but not so much that, that you can move it like a mouse. And then once you get it in the frame, you just let go, and you're good. You may want to take a picture of this. General smartphone settings for astrophotography. Uh... Turn off your flash. First thing you do if you want to start doing this. You don't want to be in the field and your thing keeps flashing every 10 seconds. You'll, you'll bring death on yourself from your fellow astronomers. You dim the display. I think we all know how to do that. Make sure you select the rear camera, not the selfie front one. Uh, well, you know, a lot of times I was out there like, like, where's my image? And then I'm looking back at myself. I go, oh, I got it. But sometimes it was just my finger that hit by mistake. So focus, manual, um, you don't want you don't want the autofocus, and sometimes when you when you go to, depending on which phone phone you got, you go to manual, and you have to focus to infinity, uh, and sometimes it's this little mountain, and you go right to that side, and uh, you'll I'll, I'll, I'll give a demonstration. Uh, shutter expo exposure. These are just general to get started. Uh, one one twenty fifth for the moon, one sixtieth for planets. 10 to 30 seconds for deep space objects. ISO settings, moon about 100, planets 2 to 400, deep space objects you want at 800. White balance auto, here's your imaging resolutions, your a video you want. Now, uh, my camera can go to something like 5,200 by 3,000. It's extremely high and I've used it and I've got high re resolution images as good or not better than my DSLR. So I'll show you. It's a... Uh, my, my, my smartphone, it's a uh, Samsung Galaxy S8. Yeah, and the, S, the S9 is supposed to be better. The S7 is supposed to have a great camera. Your video frame rate, you know, when you take pictures of um, 
you don't take a picture of planets. What you do is you take video, and then what you do is you basically run software that takes each frame and it stacks it. But the m more frames you can gather in 10 seconds, the, the, the better, because there's less atmospheric distortion that's captured, and you could just rattle off like a thousand frames in 10 seconds. I mean, that's that's spectacular, and if you could do that, I recommend doing it. Uh, recommend you switch to the format, uh, uh, to your RAW format, and I, uh, so for both the iPhone and the, uh, the Android, it's uh, DNG, and I have used it in Registax and uh, AutoStacker, and it accepts D DNG. Your, your video format, AVI if you can get it, or the standard M MP4 works just fine. Do I need to leave, to leave this on here for anybody? to 30 seconds for deep space objects. Yeah. So your camera may just say shutter speed. Just make a mental note that that's exposure. Or if it says exposure, just then you know that it means sh shutter speed. All right. Next. Anything? I'll give you a few seconds here. That's cool. Yeah, they usually put it online. They actually put the briefs online, but I'll give you the PowerPoint. I'll, I'll give it to you on a stick. This is a chance to use your smartphone and take a picture, guys. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to move forward just because I, I, I don't want to run long, but I'll, I'll, I'll help you out. So just to explain how this kind of works, who is a photographer to some degree? Who knows how, how to use a camera? Okay, who, who doesn't? It's a, you know what it is, uh, if you're, okay, I like to refer to it as astral imaging, because that's, that's, that's what it really is, but, yeah. So the, uh, your, s your uh, smartphone will let you set the ISO to 50, 25, 100, and 400. So, um, all the, uh, ISO is doing is multiplying the recorded f photon strikes by like the number two, excuse me. So for example, for 200. So here, here's an exposure that I took at 50 and you can see that it's too dark. 200 seems just right. You know, it's like the Goldilocks and the three beers, right? This one's two is too bright. Um, but let's just say, so here's what I want to get from the crowd. Say I wanted to keep the ISO at 50. Could I make it this bright? Yeah. How? <laughs> All right. So I just want to make that clear. That's what you know. That's. So I just want to make sure that when you're out there and it's a little bit too dim, your shot's too dim. That you, you know, that you know that you should make the exposure one, <coughs> one one hundredth or, or one eighty or something like that. And then you s and you start to zone in. So I just like to show this teeter totter. You, you can ISO can go up or down, and then the opposite side you raise to make it even. On the. I think that's pretty basic. This is real quick. This is an old slide, but for this is really just for beginners. Ideal conditions for any photography is, you know, clear, cool, dark, dry, stable atmosphere. That's not happening this weekend. But uh, these top three basically say if you're going to do astro imaging, don't. Uh, under conditions where it's constantly uh, overcast, if there's wind because your mount is going to rock as the telescope's going to shake too. You don't want to do it when the moon's out because unless you're imaging the moon, uh, the uh, uh, light will block out the image that you're um, trying to take. So you can get away with, with sky glow with filters. Heat kind of distorts your image, but you could still manage it. And then humidity. You can get through humidity with uh, dew heaters and uh, those, those uh, hand warmers, which I, I like to use to put into key spots of my uh, telescope. So... Uh, are there any so all I'm saying here is if these top three happen, don't bother setting up because you're just gonna really going to waste your time. Uh, but with these, you, you could you could still manage. Next, this one really quick. Uh, I, I use this in basically all my briefs. But if you're going to image for first time beginners, you want to shoot something from 30 degrees to 30 degrees and up because anything but below that, you start to cut through more atmosphere. So cutting straight up is just one atmosphere, right? Because straight through, right? 
But as you go more at an angle, you begin to cut through uh, 1.2, your mass is 1.4, 2.0, 3.9, and, and more as you go lower. And that's more humidity, more pollution, more particulates, more light, this, that, and the other. And what actually will begin to happen is if you just want to experiment, look through an eyepiece at something that's low like Saturn on the horizon. And I bet you in your eyepiece you see th three different Saturns separated by red, green, and blue. Right? Uh, unless you have something that I don't know about. But uh, if you want to try this, make sure you're imaging something that's above you or just slightly down, but not just o over the horizon. Your results will be miserable. And um, Next. Okay, so uh, a telescope for doing smartphone astrophotography. Any telescope, uh, basically, it, it, it doesn't matter, provided there is a place to attach the, the rubber bands. Um, mounts, it does not matter what mount you're using as long as it's a go-to you don't need an auto guider not for taking between 10 to, uh, to you know 10 second to, to 30 second shots you might be able to get away with a 10 second if you have a un unguided you know ungo to tracking uh, uh, excuse me telescope but you want it to be at least tracking the target uh, and in 10 seconds you won't get much movement and any questions it's pretty straightforward I think Okay, so I just want to show, like, so what I discovered, uh, I think this is just worth going over. So last year, uh, so Alan gave me this, and he was, I thought he was being a gentleman. I thought, I tried and I tried it. I, is this for a broken leg? <laughs> so uh, I kind of gave up on that. You know, I got more, more connections, and I saw this one online that I think it's, real pop it's a popular one you see online. I don't know if you have it yet does not work what I can tell you is I tried one and a quarter two inch and you know most eyepieces have this so are yeah yeah so you're gonna find out that most have this tiny lip to hold hold the rubber thing and it just doesn't grab and then when you finally get it to grab and you go to a target the the weight of the bottom of the camera causes torque and makes it pop off and uh i'm like how how can they, they advertise this so one day i got frustrated and i go i was actually using rubber bands to hold this onto the eyepiece and go why do we even need this i bet you i could just do a uh, eyepiece so uh what, what i'll do real quick because i'll just give you a demonstration really quick on how to do this do, do, do i have any volunteers to hold this a second anybody can, okay so i don't need to do anything you just need to hold it. So it's kind of hard to do when it's by itself, but when it's on the mount, so when it's actually on, on the mount, you can get this done in like a few seconds. You just, and it makes it difficult. Actually, it's, it kind of makes it hard if you, if, if it's not, okay, let's just do real quick. We'll just do one, right? You got one on there, and then you need one to counter it. Let's do that real quick. Works good enough. And then, oh, yes, it will. <laughs> All right. So you're actually good right here. And then what, what, you, what you can do is if I can get my, my camera on. I don't want to spend too much time. Thank you. On your phone, yeah. And then you also turn off your, uh, your um, autofocus. So then you just use the manual focuser to, to, to get the thing. So for some reason, come on, phone, turn on. So the problem is the only, only thing you need to overcome is on the phone is uh, you just want to be on the buttons. That's like the only, um, of course, I'm going to struggle with this now because I'm, I'm in a rush. The bottom line is that you just have to play with it for a few seconds, and then once you get it, you're fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know what? That's actu actually going to help. And I, I may actually bypass this just in the, in, in the just for the sake of time, but uh, you know, this is off of a dob, and all, all you need is to hook the rubber bands ar around one of these thumb screws or uh, the focuser. And uh, I'll I'll get back to this at the end just to prove that it's really not that hard. You just it just needs to be mounted. But actually, here are shots right here. Uh, where did I put that little pointer? So there it is works just like that you you can get an image and you can see an image of Saturn uh, don't if you notice that your target is too bright then your ISO is too high so bring it down you should actually see the planet and the bands right on the front of the of the, uh, uh, of the um, uh, phone uh, 
give this a try. Batting off mass, this is just something really quick. You can focus on a star first to get it sharp and then go to your target, or you can use a batten off mask. And for those that haven't used one before, just real quick, as you, so you put this on the front of your scope, you just hang it. And then as you move the focuser, which is, this is for the camera, as you move the focuser, this star, this X, this top part begins to move left and right. But when you finally get everything centered, just like this, you're at focused and infinity. And now you can turn to your planet, your, uh, your uh, deep space object, star, or whatever it is you want to image. So you can buy these for, you know, five bucks, or you could down download a template and make one with paper. Okay, so uh, steps for shooting the moon, for example. So this is, a s you know, you may want to look at this or take a picture of it. Um, to do to attach a smartphone to the eyepiece, start the desired DSLR app, set your ISO to 1100, you know, uh, the shutter speed, the focus, manual infinity, point at the moon, uh, adjust the smartphone so that the image is on the center of your screen. So I should probably take the time to get that on. But what happens is once it's already on there, you just move it around like a mouse until it's centered, until the camera is centered on the eyepiece, and you, you, you will get a picture. Um... Okay. Yes. Yep. Yes. So the answer is yes, I have, just as a result of you using the eyepiece, right? So you're already doing the afocal. And then you'll see in the, in the shots that I took that there's a bit of vignetting in there. But then I took flats. I took flats and darks and everything, and it kind of smoothed things out. Yeah, and you've got to... Oh, you're, you're absolutely correct. So when you're out there, that's what you're doing. You are trying to, you spend a few seconds just, it, it's, it's not minutes, it's just seconds trying, trying to, to center everything. Which, th the benefit of the rubber band is when you're off with one of these, you got to walk up, you need to loosen, readjust, tighten, check again, and it just becomes time consuming and cumbersome. But with the rubber band, you just move around and you just lock in and you're done. I find it to be a lot faster, which I'll, I will prove to you before this ends. No. No. If you want to do planets, so I'm going to give a demonstration on how to process planets, uh, but attach this to, you know, same thing. I attach it. Set the ISO between 2 to 400, so the planet's like between 2 to 400. But if you find out it's too bright, then just, then just, uh, you just lower the ISO. The shutter speed is, is 1 to 160. I th you know, th that's how fast it's taking the video. Uh, point at a planet, adjust the smartphone so it's in the center of the eyepiece, once again. Uh, focus manually at infinity. Uh, so once you're focused, uh, you take it, you look at it to see if it's under or overexposed. And at that point, um, and I think right here you can actually see some of my settings that I I, I, I actually put there. You know, it's it's kind of. So on your phone, when it depending on which application you use. Uh, you go to manual focus, uh, so you turn off the autofocus. And from there, you go to, um, so it's expecting a manual focus with your phone, but we're not doing that. We're using the telescope focuser. So you actually, you f move the focuser and it starts to, to bring it in. Oh, so I think I'm, I'm missing the point. When you go to manual focus, you'll have options for focusing with a slider and go right to the, usually it's on the right, which is infinity, and it shows like a little mountain. It might be in pro mode, which is kind of like a hidden Easter egg. It, they don't really make it clear that, that pro mode is there, but there's a way to get to it. And I got an S8, but I th maybe on the S7 as well. If not, you can download an app. Yeah. 
So that's not the scope that I was using to image the planets. I brought this in for uh, convenience. I, I have a bigger scope. It's a it's a F five F seven refractor five inch. Um, I actually took that with a dab. It's a fourteen inch. So um, use eyepieces that you would normally use for your eye. So if you're going to view planets, you know ten. It's probably good. Deep space uh, objects, I used to be u between 20 to 40. Yeah, you choose the eyepiece. Yeah. And then you just gauge. Am I too zoomed in? And a benefit of the smartphone, too, is you can pinch it and zoom in just a little bit more. So if you still get this small planet, don't zoom in too much because it begins to pixelize. But there's a point where it's still not pixelized. And uh, you, you could take advantage of that. So take 10 seconds of video it, it, it doesn't have to be 30 the reason sometimes you don't want to take like 30 seconds 45 seconds or a minute is a lot of times planet i mean a lot of times planets rotate uh and so jupiter rotates very fast so if you're planning a stack you know you're you're, 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 you're getting this rotating planet and it's probably going to smear on you so just don't do more than 10 to 30 seconds that, that, that's good and then stack the video frames and registacks which i'll give a demonstration and then you finish with Photoshop. And in Photoshop, you just increase brightness, contrast, saturation, things like that. And you get a result. Um, so let's get into Registax. And I will just get on my laptop here and show you. So I'm going to bounce out of here. Hope I got my glasses. I would have been messed up without my glasses. So. So because you're out there and you're only taking 10 second images, you can take like 100 Jupiters and Saturns and then you just choose which one looks the best kind of thing. So let's just go in here. Um, I believe I took those on 829. Let's, let's take a look. Those were images. Where's my captures? The solar captures. Of course, I'm not going to, I'm panicking. I'm not going to find the, it's just one of these ones that I did. Yeah, just before I came up here, I took a bunch of solar pictures. I can't believe it. Where's all my MP4s? Folks, I thought I had this ready to go. I thought I'd find it right away. Oh, jeez. I've gotten into the sun lately, and it's just kind of... Jeez, more suns. Okay, so here, you can see this is just playing a video. Let's just, just play it. You can see that's, that's Jupiter. It should look like this in your phone. So if it's not, then you still need to focus or you, you, you need to adjust your, your ISO and things like This one was with a 14-inch reflector. Yeah. And I just wanted to make sure I got, I got some, some definition. So uh, Registax is free. I'm going to go over this really quick, but uh, you know, if you want to meet afterward, I can show you more. Um, basically, I kind of like that video. I got ones of Saturn. I can process that later. Let's just get Jupiter. Just drag it in. Used file format. Oh, can't drag and drop it. Select. Sorry about that. 6 to 15. Let's open that up. And there, there's our planet. It's not looking half bad, is it already? And actually, I'm s let me think about this. This looks... Uh, oh, okay. Sorry, folks. I goofed. You know, I practiced this before I came here. And so I'm uh, just bringing in an AVI is not a problem. Why was that? Why would that be a problem? Oh man, come on, pe people are waiting. <laughs> I mean, it's an AVI. I could there, it's right there. It's finding it. It probably just doesn't like a drag and drop. So I apologize. So this is your image. Uh, you know, th th this is one image. As you move this slider down here it begins to uh, go through each frame, okay? So 
what you want to do with uh, Registex is, and, and I'm not going to uh, look, take too long to look, but look for one of the frames that looks like, like, like one of the best that, that looks okay to me. And that is going to be your registration frame that I want all the other frames to stack on top of this one. Okay, so you just set the align points. You could put a few more in there. I like to do the edges um, just to make sure. What moon shadow? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you, 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 yes, you can. And then uh, you just walk through it. So that was set the align points. The next thing you do is say align, and it's going through right now. And it's align. And so it's going through all the frames, and it's just stacking them from best to worst. So what you can do is at the end of the, 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 the frame list, you could say, keep the top 25%, but get rid of the 75% the garbage. And then, then this way you capture the best of the best frames. So it's done with 100. You go to this thing called, uh, I'm, I'm gonna show full image, just makes it easier to see everything. You, you go to limit, uh, show the stack graph. And this kind of shows you, this is from best to worst. And so what I'd like to do is maybe like chop off the last and actually these are all pretty good so this curve will tell you the quality and you know what let's just get rid of the last quarter I'm happy with that you could, you could use this as well I guess okay the, the track lines on the circles yeah oh so what was happening was it took all the points from that uh, registration frame and it was showing you on this frame because remember I was going through the slider and they were moving so on this next picture I got to move th these alignment points this way and then on the next picture so it computes where it needs to move the planet so here's the cool thing about doing this with Registax is you can use an unguided telescope with no power and take a 10 second shot and even though the image is moving in your eyepiece because of the Earth rotation, it'll move, keep moving it over, and it, it stacks it very nicely. So then we go stack. It only takes a few seconds. It's uh, Yeah, so like Registax is free. They're on like version 6.1 something, 6.108. No, you know what? I just use a PC. I haven't, uh, but um, so I will show you the real magic in a second. Okay, so all my images are now stacked. Uh, let's go back to full image. So let's click on this. So what I want to do is show the. Um, there's something called the processing area here. Probably won't. Uh, here it is. But yeah, I'll do. I'll, I'll do 512. Shows me 512 by 512 pixels. And then what I can do is go into something called the wavelets. And what this does is it helps to clean out your picture. So what? Watch what happens as I move this number three. You should see the planets start coming in already. See. So what I like to do is uh, make a curve. So one adjust. Uh, it, it's, it's finer pixels, this is more coarse. So you'll see that as I adjust one, it'll start to adjust, but you know, look how rough it is. So you don't want to do too much there. I just like to, make, like to make a gentle curve for each one. Um, and you just kind of learn this through a process. There's a lot of online tutorials. I'm going to come back because I think it's a little bit too much. This is where you use your artistic talent. Some people try to over sharpen everything because they want to bring out the detail, but then it looks fake, right? So I don't, I don't try to make it look that way. Um, I'm just gonna move it back a little more. Here's the last thing that's of benefit to this group is a little function here called uh, RGB align. So a lot of times when you take a picture, even though if you use an APO refractor, uh, sometimes you get separation of R, G, and B. So what you can do is you, I'm, so I'm gonna click on this image. And I'm going to say, 
I want my reds and my green and blue pixels to be on top of one another and not separated. So it's going through it right now. It's already at 75%. And it's actually going to move it and even make it sharper and clearer. You're it's going to be amazing. Okay. So I think it's looking pretty good for just a cell phone, right? Um, so I'm going to close this. I could still play with it, but, you know, because we're a little short on time and I... Um, but then you do something called the do all. And what it does is when I was doing that processing area, all the adjustments I was doing was in that small processing square of 512 by 512 pixels. But now that I like what I see, I want to do the entire image with those settings. So you do do all. And then it's 100%. Let's go save that image. I'm going to save that to my desktop so I don't have to look for it again. Um, I'm going to save it to a TIFF. Do that. that well, yeah, the, the default is .pip, right, excuse me. Save it, and it should be saved. Let's get out of here, and here she is. PaintShop Pro comes up pretty fast, I mean, excuse me, Photoshop. I used to have a program called PaintShop Pro, and I most sometimes just refer to that as just view, zoom in, um, so we can see a little bit better in here. I want everybody to be able to see it. All right, there it is, view, zoom in. First thing you do, uh, what I do is something called a levels adjustment. Boy, that's pretty tight. Boy, that, that so this is really your your blacks are on the left, your white, your brights are on the white, excuse me, on the right. And this is already a very dark image. It'll probably start disappearing as I, okay. So what I could do is start to whiten it a little bit. Just make some adjustments there. And sometimes what I like to do is uh, image adjustments. We all I think we all like our little bit of brightness. Maybe uh, up the brightness a little bit. All right, contrast to so maybe bring out some of those colors a little bit more. I'm happy with that. And probably the last thing I do is uh, saturation. Makes the reds redder, blues bluer, things like that. Starts to really bring them in. I'm going to go very hard so you see what happens. But so that's very hard, right? But I don't want to go that hard. I just want to go like maybe 5 to 10 and save it. It's up to you if you want to crop it. Sometimes I do to get rid of, uh, get rid of, the, of the aberrations. Uh, so let's just do the crop tool. Sorry, folks. Just trying to use a little bit of crop. Sometimes I like to do the crop first because... It gets rid of all the junk that's at the edges, like the vignetting. So why even process that? I just try to get rid of that right off the right off the bat. And that's image, crop, done, file, save. And maybe do file, save as a JPEG. Uh, whatever, let's just save that. I'm, I'm happy with that. And let's close it. And then there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a new background image for your phone. So, there you go. That's how you take pictures of planets. All right. So, how am I on time? Am I still within the hour? Yeah, no, you have some time. But most of them have some questions. And oh, okay. Well, you know what? The uh, Deep Sky Stacker is with the uh, is going to show you how to do deep space objects, which is what I think people really want to. I'll be around a afterward for questions. I mean, I'm not going anywhere. If you want to. I put that little clicker. No, that's my fault. Uh, nope, nope. I'll so that's just Registax. Here's what we, I think a lot of us care about. We want to image deep space objects. So kind of the same settings you do attach your you know, smartphone to, to the telescope again, start the desired DSLR app that you downloaded, set the ISO to 800, higher works better. You got to get something in 10 seconds, at 10 to 30 seconds, and 100 or 200 just doesn't do it. So you can go as high as 1600, but then you introduce more noise. So uh, set the shutter speed between 10 to 30 seconds, which is your exposure time. Uh, set focus to manually point to the target. You want to choose targets with an apparent magnitude of eight or less. You want brighter targets. You're not going to get the elephant trunk or the eagle nebula, but you'll definitely get, you know, the Orion nebula, the, the dumbbell, and some of the brighter ones. Um, pointing at the target, adjust the uh, image. So it's so when you start to adjust, 
You're not going to see this in the picture immediately. By the way, this is an actual after shot. But you can look at the stars. You, f you center based on the stars that surround it because you're just not going to see the image yet. So when you point to the target, just really looking at the, the, the stars around it. Uh, so in the eyepiece, focus. Take 50 or more images so um, of 10 seconds. So I had a remote switch and I lost it before I, I was coming up here, which, which really stinks. But you don't want to touch your phone when you're taking images because it causes shake, right? But if you turn on this function, which I'm sure we're all going to love, is, um, is you go, you know, cheese. Cheese. So I was out there the other night, and my <laughs> I was out there with my neighbors are looking. You know, they're looking out the window as I'm going, smile. And because it's in 10 sec sec second intervals, I take a sip of beer, smile. So, <laughs> smile, and every 10 seconds. So, once you do that, <laughs> yeah, they know. So, it's just, w but it works, right? And uh, what, <laughs> what you can also do is you can set the timer. So, you set your exposure to 10 to 30 seconds, but you set the timer to two seconds. So, if you actually have to touch it, you give it two seconds of for it to calm down before it takes the shot, right? So you could do that too. Uh, take darts, flats, biases. I'll explain what those are in a second. Stack them in Deep Sky Stacker, and uh, uh, you finish in Photoshop. So all all the dark is is extra. Excuse me. After I took about I took 100 of these images, but you want to take a, a, at least 50. So 100 times 10 seconds. Um, then you take the cap, the, 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 the uh, telescope cap, the lens cap, you put it on, and you start your, your cheesing again. Smile, smile for every 10 seconds, right? Because you want to take darks. That's how you, how you take darks. It's the, so darks are basically the, the same exposure time in the ISO settings as the image that you were taking. So a lot of people don't know that. Bias is really easy. You set, when you go to set your exposure, you were you so you could set the exposure to, to like 10 to 30 seconds but if you go right down to the left it's like one to two thousandths or one one or, or four thousandth all you're wanting to record is the noise of reading the chip so you set it to your fastest speed and you go smile 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 or you, or you just keep keep pressing it right and you just rattle off nine and nine seconds basically so flats are a little bit more difficult I'm just going to give you a high level, uh, but w what I did is I put a laptop and I ran Notepad because it's white with a white background. I put it on on top of here, and I practiced my exposures so that so this is a shortcut. There's better ways to do this, but I'm just telling you a shortcut when you're out there. Um, I produced an image that there was no image in here except there was just a white halo of where my image was in my light pictures. Does that make sense? So you just want to tweak the the uh, exposure time. And my exposure time was like 1, one, th one, one thousand four hundred excuse me, 1,440 was the speed that I found to reproduce this without an image. And then you stack all that uh, for a final image. So um, let's go to Deep Sky Stacker. I'm going to leave this up so people can read it about lights, darks, flats, and bias. And then I will uh, just fly through Deep Sky Stacker. Actually, I won't be able to because you're it's going to take the screen away. But um, So what I did is um, I was smart this time, and I preloaded it. So we wouldn't have to go through all this. We just need to find the uh, icon. Deep Sky Stacker 64-bit. Open. So what you would be doing is you basically want to put your darks in one folder, your lights in one f in another folder, and so on for your flats and bias. And then you just load e each one separately. But in this case, excuse me. So you you could see here that you would say like, load my dark files, and then those you know are your darks you bring in, and you click OK, and it brings them in. You do that for everything. But then, just to make things faster, I decided to say uh, here the one to use. And here's everything. Shoot. I just plug it right in. 
and then I just drag the entire uh, DCIM uh, uh, section of all the images. Then I parse out the flats, the darks, and lights into, into separate folders. Uh, so what's so in this case, the higher the number, the better the software considers that image in quality. And what it does, it, ha it has to do with star accuracy and clarity. Um, so, you know, if you have better stars, it, it considers it to be a better picture. But, uh, so, the ones that I didn't check, so for example here, at this one picture, I didn't like it, so I turned it off. See, I just turned it off. But let's rock and roll. So as you can see on the on the left side, it says lights, darks are mixed in there, right? D darks, lights, f more darks, and bias. And then at the end of it are all my flat pictures. If I can show you a picture of a flat picture. Yeah, you know what? This will make it clear to you. I'm trying to make this one image brighter if I can. There. Do you notice how that light spot is similar to the picture that I took of the nebula. There was like that eyepiece whiteness in the background, the, the vignetting. That's what that is. So I made a capture so that it looks something like that. And then what all we do is we do um, uh, register check, check pictures. There are recommended settings, okay, uh, because I am a wise guy. I don't, well, in this case, I did choose the uh, basic settings, but you just you can just click OK. I'm keeping 95% of my frames. Stack after registering. Let's stack. And uh, oh, yeah, just real quick, just making sure it lights. Hold on. Sorry about that. Let, let's just go. Oh, you mean this thing? Yeah. Oh, so this is just saying when I stack, do I want to do a mosaic? Do I want to do based on an intersection of where they all intersect here? See that? And but I just want to stack them based on an image that I choose to be the best image, which is your registration frame. So I went through this list. I guess I'll just show you really quick since there's questions about this. Let me cancel this. I can just show you. Um, let me scroll through these light frames. Oh. Uh, funny, but I can't find. There it is. I chose this. Th the score like doesn't matter when you just want to select a registration frame, but I want all things to uh, stack according to this frame that I've chosen. See it there. You'll notice that this light in the background is similar to the flat frame that I took, but without the, okay. So everything is ready to go. Let's register my check. You know what? I'm just going to stack. Let's go just so that, so that we can save time. I'm going to click OK. There's different options. Do you people want to see the parameters? Okay, let's just click go. All right. Yeah, it's gonna. You're gonna see it that it's like uh, it's gonna load the uh, Samsung RAW frames, right? The uh, DNG frames. Then it's gonna load the uh, darks, the flats. This is, and then it does the dark frame subtraction for you. It, it inserts the flats. It, it does the bias sub subtraction for you, and you get a pretty decent image. And then, like I did with the planet, uh, and I bring it into Photoshop, and uh, I fix it there. So that's all I have. We can end it now. If anybody wants to stick around for the final image, I'll show you the last few steps, and then we'll we'll Any break. On the type rubber oh, <laughs> I brought these for you guys. So grab away. You need a two. So it's just these uh, two or three inch bands. The the non latex. I actually got them not because of the non latex. I got them because they were blue and they I thought they looked cool. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, start to ruin the image. Okay. Well, let's thank John, and he'll he'll show you the picture. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it.
Thank you. It was an honor. Uh, a, couple, a couple of program notes. Um, this afternoon, we're going to do our experiment in, in uh, observing workshop 201, where for people who have got a basic understanding of where things are in the sky but want to develop some confidence in their ability to find fainter things like the dumbbell, so you can point your telescope at it and take these wonderful pictures, you do have to find it before you yes. can take the pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you don't have a go-to, so we're going to ask people to bring their binoculars or whatever, and we're going to go through some basics of using finder charts, very basic things. And then if it clears up some evening after the, the sky tour that Skip gives, we'll do a little bit more advanced and we'll try to find in the sky the things we practice with this afternoon. So that's 1.30. At 3 o'clock, Tom Finkenbinder is going to be talking about Skynet. Uh, for those of you who are pessimists and are not meteorite collectors yet, but want to observe, uh, Skynet is a way to do remote observing. And he's going to talk about that in GRBs, which he's very interested in. Uh, and this evening we have uh, Bob Naya, who's going to talk about Umau Mau, if I'm pronouncing it right, the asteroid-like object which is known to have been an interstellar visitor. Hmm. Uh, and that'll be our talk after dinner. And uh, I think tonight we may have an after after event. If it doesn't clean up, if it doesn't clear up immediately, so we have the sky tour, then we'll have Bob Traub, uh, who'll do his presentation of uh, night music uh, for an interlude. If it is clear, Bob keeps saying it. <laughs> yeah, and, and Bob knows he's, the, he's, he's low priority, sky first. Uh, and if, if we don't get a chance, it'll be tomorrow morning. Um, so we have a full, a full schedule of events. Yeah. Richard? Ellen, uh, there's one more event today 